Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea, in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, land of Zebulon and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light, and those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death Light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went all around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated because we've got some special work to do today and I've got some special people to help me do it today. Today, the people who are in darkness are about to see the light. Someone's going to turn on the light. You know, when we're in the middle of the dark, it's no fun. When they turn the lights on, all of a sudden go, I see. Well, today we're going to try and see what Jesus is going to teach us. But in order for us to do that, we've got to hear him call. Today, Jesus is calling. He's calling his disciples. And he's saying, I need some help. So I'm going to need some help. I need a St. Peter. You want to be Peter? I got a Peter. I need a Jesus. Matthew, you want to be Jesus? Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Of course Matthew wants to be Jesus. Come on up here, Matthew. I need a... uh, uh, Oh, I I need a whole bunch of disciples. I need a a Mary. I need a Martha. I need a a Mary Magdalene. Come on up here. I I need a James and a John. And a Joseph. Oh, yeah. Come on, a James, a John, a Joseph. I need some other disciples. Come on up here. Because here's what Jesus is going to do. This is Jesus, by the way. This is, this is Matthew Jesus. Not Matt, Matthew. Right. Oh, you could call me matt Zus. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, or call me Matthew J. The J meant Jesus. But don't call him subtle. <laughs> here's, Matthew's, here's what Matthew says. Matthew says, come follow me. And everybody leaves their nets and they follow him. And they're walking in this direction. Bum, bada be bum, 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 bada. Then he stops. And he says the most important words in the gospel, and they are repent. Uh, repent? Repent, yes. Repent, that's really important because what repent means is turn around. Turn around. Yes, and now walk the other way. Dun, da 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 dun, 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 da 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 dun, dun. Okay, stop here. Get that. Get that. And you got it all. Now, do you get it? No. The reason we don't get it is because because repent means turning your whole life around. Repent means I'm walking in one direction, and the direction I'm walking in is all about me. When I turn around, it's all about someone else. Now, the best way to understand that is through a story. So Jesus was forever telling stories. He told stories about the Good Samaritan, and he told stories about the rich man and Lazarus, and he told stories about the prodigal son. He told lots of stories. Well, this is a story, and maybe we can understand what it means to repent 
by this story. So first of all, I need some people in heaven. So I need another person in heaven. Donna, let's put the people in heaven over here. This is the Filipino story. It's one of my, keep going, keep coming. It's one of my favorite, favorite stories because, because there's, okay. Right. Up in heaven, all right. I need somebody else in heaven. One more in heaven, all right. Go over to heaven, Ken. Uh, all right. No, not yet, you're coming. No, I need someone. I right, no, don't stay here because you guys get to be in hell. <laughs> Wait, 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 time out, time out. <laughs> no, that was another story. Don't say that because that's not part of the story. No, 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 it is part of the story. <laughs> Trust me, I wrote the story. Don't mess with the story, Matthew. Gosh, you know the difference between God and Satan. Okay, now, here, here's the story. There was a fellow, he was a great guy. His name was Matthew. He died and he went to heaven. Well, up, up, up in heaven. All right, and now in heaven, he's looking at the people that are really happy. Happy, be happy, yes, happy. Sir. Yes. They're full fed. Yes. They're lovely. Yeah. He says, okay, I see heaven, but what's hell like? And St. Peter says, let me take you down to hell. Uh, oh, no, so no, he's no, taking no. him down. No, that's the other side. That's the no. other side. All right, now. Nah. That's the side. Here. This but, heaven is mm. this side, hell is that side, or we could call this one heck. Okay, well, <laughs> took him down to heck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> when did I lose control over my story here? And one day, I had no choice. <laughs> hey, come on back. All right. Now, the people in hell are in terrible straits because they're hungry and they're sad and they're in woe. And the reason they're so sad is because in front of them is a banquet table. And it's got the most wonderful food. It's got lasagna, and it's got pizza, and it's got, I'm Italian, don't you know? And it's got gnocchi. It's got everything wonderful on the tables in front of it. But there's only one rule in hell. And here's the rule. You've got to eat with three-foot-long chopsticks. So every time they see that beautiful food, they pick it up and... No, because they can't get it to their mouth. It's hell. Because there's a wonderful banquet before everybody. And they're starving to death. The one who said it best was Auntie Mame. She says, all the world's a banquet. And so many suckers are starving to death. Actually, she didn't use the word sucker. But she says, there's so many people starving to death. Because they're trying to get something and feed themselves but they can't feed themselves because there's this stupid rule and all of this beauty is in before them and they can't eat it so they're starving and they're angry and they're hurt and he says let me get the heck out of here so he comes back and in heaven they're happy be happy a oh, happy people in heaven and the happy people in heaven are happy because they got all this beautiful food. And Matthew says, I suppose, I suppose there's, a, there's no rule about chopsticks here. He says, no, 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 no. In heaven, there's only one rule. You've got to eat everything with three foot long chopsticks. Oh, not this again. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew was at my other parish, don't you know? Change the material, change the parish. This one again, Matthew, yes. Because in hell, they were trying to feed themselves. And in heaven, they feed each other. Oh. Can I hear it for the mighty Father Tony players? You may go back to the You get it because if you get it you got it all repent means turning around it's a radical reorientation that's what Jesus wants to say and there is a banquet waiting for each and every one of us our problem is that we live in a world where we think there's not enough for me and for thee we think we live in a world of scarcity that's not the world that God created our problem is if I feed only myself I'm gonna starve to death 
then there isn't enough for me and for thee. Buckminster Fuller once says the only reason that there are wars is because I don't think there's enough to go around. I don't think there's enough for you, there's enough for me, so I better take care of me, me first. My first, my group first, my color first, my nationality first, my religion first. I'll take care of me, if there's anything left over, maybe. And that's going to lead to greed. Because once greed gets in, it's never enough. There's never, ever, ever enough. And greed always leads to violence. And violence always leads to wars. And wars are obsolete. Jesus said that 2,000 years ago. They don't work. That doesn't work. This works. This works. There's more than enough to go around. There's more than enough to feed the world. Because we are all in the same boat. We all have special needs. No one is better than anyone else. And that's the way it really is. In the eyes of the one who counts. And the eyes of the one who counts are the eyes of God. The eyes of love.